Alright, yeah, and welcome back to some more Magic Jewels with the third and final episode with our Mono Red Burn deck. So I have made a few changes to the list one last time. So we had Tamio's Journal in here, and although it's good for card draw and stuff like that, it just it would seem too slow. So what we've actually done is cut the Tamio's Journal and added in two Bedlam Revelers. So six and two red, Creature Devil Horror. Which means it doesn't get bounced by thing in the ice. I like to point that out. Uh, Bedlam Reveler costs one less to cast for each instant or sorcery card in your graveyard. It has prowess, so it gains plus one plus one for the turn for every instant or sorcery cast. And when it enters the battlefield, we discard our entire hand and draw three cards. So it's card advantage as well as a discard outlet for our fiery tempers and things like that. So if we've got a handful of lands, this guy can be as cheap as two red mana. For a 3-4 who draws us 3 cards, which is pretty awesome. You may notice there's 2, and that we're at 60 cards. It's because I've also cut a Weaver of Lightning as well. These seem a bit situational the more that I play them. They are really good, especially for um, blocking things like Smuggler's Copter. And dealing with Servos and Thopters. But we've had a few matchups where they're just not playing creatures. And in that instance, then Weaver of Lightning is a little bit useless. So we've gone down to 2 copies of it. It's still pretty useful and when we draw it there's a good chance that it's still useful but you know just because there are the few matchups where it's just not that good and we'd rather have more burn cards with the bedlam reveler all right guys i will see you in the games all right we're in we're on the play we have two lands bombardment into twin bolt and if we draw lands then we've got defiance into firebird and weaver of lightning it's serviceable hand does what we need to do with it I suppose so we'll go a mountain holding up galvanic bombardment for his first creature if he's got one if he's running aggro then it's pretty sweet what color are you what are you doing green red all right so this might be ramping rank 25 Tony 235 give me your best all right we'll play a mountain pass the turn hold up twin ball bombardment if we need to See what he's got for us. Ooh, Jund into Sylvan Advocate. So we're gonna not do anything here because we can kill the Advocate with our hmm, with our other Galvanic Bombardment. Now I'm a little less bothered about pulling the trigger on this actually, um, mostly because if he gives us another target with two toughness, then the other one can be used to kill the Advocate, which would be the more efficient play. Plus, if we have a Weaver of Lightning now and he doesn't play another uh, two toughness creature, then the trigger off of Weaver plus Galvanic Bombardment will be enough to kill it as well. And until then, it's a decent blocker. So, Weaver of Lightning down. See if it eats any removal. Won't be against it, to be honest. Goes for his attacks, and he's gonna... Come in for the attack and call your bluff. If you want to use a pump spell, use it on a Weaver of Lightning. Bluff called. Eh, there's Oath of Chandra. So this is super friends then. Okay. Weaver down. So it looks like we're going with a Twin Bolt bombardment plan. We get more lands. Yay. Always good. We could also Collective Defiance, kill it that way and deal 3 damage to our opponent. Hmm. If we did 2 for 1, we're only getting 1 damage on our opponent and getting rid of an Advocate. I don't like that. If we Collective Defiance, then it's just a 1 for 1 with an added bonus. Um, and how much do I like this hand? That's the other thing. Because I might want to save this when we have an extra mana so that I can dump the rest of my hand. So I think I'll just Firebird here. See if we draw an extra land next turn. If we do, then I get to... Oops. I get to kill it, deal three damage, and get rid of these Bombardments. Which, if he's running Planeswalker Super Friends, then I imagine these creatures are not going to get any smaller than that. So these are largely useless. Except for the ones that will follow, with these being in the graveyard. So he's going to get in for two here. 
So we're just hoping that he does absolute sweet bugger all and we get a land. Well, he plays a land and he goes and fetches another. Another red source. Okay. And read the bones. Scry two, draw two, and lose two life. Which is good for us in a roundabout fashion. We get a firecraft. Alright. Well, we're just going to get him for three again. Now I don't want to dump the firecraft. So I'm going to have to pull the trigger on that one for too long. Um, let's see. Do I want to just use it now? We get to hold up a bombardment. Not that it'll probably do anything, but... Gets our opponent down to eight. Five with the Collective Defiance. Three with the Twin Bolt. We just need one more burn spell. Plus, we've got the Firebird to deal a lot of damage as well. So... I think I'll hold off showing him my more our larger burn spells just so that he can feel like he can comfortably take more damage than he is. Let this firebird get in for a couple of hits, for example. Before he finds out that it's actually too late. And we can just twin bolt him instead, which is one of the things we we're planning on doing. Woodland Wanderer. So that is a 5-5, five, five. so we can do 2 and 3 to it, and still Twin Bolt. So we're going to Twin Bolt you. We're going to deal 2 damage to that, let it resolve, and 3 damage again to kill it. We just need... Ooh, Bedlam Reveler. Pretty good, pretty good, because we are planning on casting that last, if he's alive that long. So we'll get in 4-3 here. Down to 7. We'll go Collective Defiance, kill his Advocate, and 3 damage to him. Because if he plays another land, this gets pumped out of range. But I don't think he's going to live that long. But let's not take the chance. We don't want to dump our hand either, so... 4 damage to that, 3 damage to you. Down to four. If he has no life gain in his deck, Firecraft will do it for us. If he does, Bedlam Reveler is probably going to draw us into enough to get back. Okay. Oath of Chandra kills our Firebird. That's fine. Legend rules the other one. And goes for a, wood a Woodland Wanderer, which means we have won the game. Officially. And a land. Alright. Well, we won't play that because otherwise it'll just put a trigger on the stack and CBA with that mess. Four damage to you. You are tapped out. Yep. We're going to finish the game. Sweet. Alright. Another win for Burn. Alright. I'll see you in the next game, guys. Alright. We're in. We're on the draw, we have two Thermo Alchemists and two Burn Sources. I think this is a decent hand. Doesn't get much better than this. He goes with a Fertile Thicket. Or she. It's Beth Alpha. Rank 31. She goes with a Forest, so she's drawing into a Forest next turn. Okie dokie. It's fine with me, as long as you're not drawing into action. And Kozilek's Return. Somehow I feel that that is going to be absolutely useless, but it is another trigger for the alchemists as a silver lining. So if you've gone and put... Ooh, grapple with the pass. We're about to find out anyway what deck you're running. Mono green stompy by the looks of it. And you went with the Sylvan Advocate. Sure. Right, well we are going to go with the Thermo Alchemist. The one who blocks... Really good against Sylvan Advocate for that, although somehow I expect that you've got uh, Primal Bellows and things like that in your deck, so... 
I do not suppose that if you go in for an attack, my Thermal Alchemist will survive it. But the thing with uh, Primal Bellows is, don't give Trample, so as big as it is, I'd rather it be used against one of my Thermal Alchemists instead. Right, do we take the Greedy player here and just go for another Alchemist? Or do I burn away his Advocate and ping him twice? Uh, with the Primal Bellow, our Fiery Temper just whiffs as well. That's another thing to note. I think I'll just get greedy here. So, just going to Thermal Alchemist. So we get an extra 2 damage on all of our burn spells. There are fight mechanics that he could have, but he's going to have to pump up the Sylvan Advocate first in order to do that. So it plays a mountain. Oh, it plays a mountain. It plays a forest. Probably coming in for an attack here. Yep. We're just going to let it through. It doesn't kill us. And I think with Thermo, uh, with Thermo Alchemist on the battlefield, we stand a good chance of beating you out a lot faster. Did not go for... Oh no, you can't get it with that. I was thinking, is he not going for his Pulse of Marassa? Got to keep that in mind though, he could be at any point uh, 6 damage higher than he is. Ah, with a Verdurous Gear Hulk coming out. We have problems. Because it'll be coming out next turn. Because it'll be up to 5 mana. We can wait to see if he puts it on the Advocate. But somehow I highly doubt it. He's probably just going to put it on the Gear Hulk. Which will have Trample. And easily get through our Alchemists. We don't have the mana to Dynavolt Tower either at the moment. So I think we're just going to... Pass the turn. Hold up Fiery Temper. Ping him for two, and then ping him for two again off the untap trigger. Might just be able to race you out this way. Yeah, I don't see our opponent gear hulking and putting it on the advocate, honestly. So here comes the gear hulk. We'll find out. Go on, put some of the counters on it. If you put even some of the counters on... Oh. Oh. Might just get punished here. Tap for two. That's two damage. Three to your advocate. Untaps our alchemist. Loses all of his counters. And then wait for this one to untap. And get you again. So he just has a 4 4 with trample now. Which still is a little bit scary with the thought of Primal Bellow. But we have just avoided an extra 4 damage on the advocate. Oh, he did put some on the uh, Gear Hulk as well. Fair play. Weaver of Lightning. Hmm. So we got 4 there, down to 11. Extra Fiery Temper. I'm getting close. We're getting close. Um. He's got how many lands? 1, 2... Three, four, five. Primal Bella for five. Takes it up to an 11 11. He's got two, it kills me. Which is a problem. I don't think I need to state. Hmm. So, with that in mind, the only way we're killing that Gear Hulk is by Weaver of Lightning for this turn and then burning it next turn. Do we win? How many turns is it going to take us to kill him? So, we got 2 damage, 5 damage, 7 damage. That's on the next turn. Then we've got 9 damage, 11 damage, 13 damage. And we don't have anything else in our hand. So, we're kind of top decking at that point. Ugh. I think we'll just pass the turn and just try to get a little bit lucky on our next draw. We just need a burn spell. A good one. Like a fiery temper. And we also need him to not have any 
Any life gain. Gather the pack, wild size. Went with the advocate. Okay. And plays the advocate. Need you to not have any primal bellows. There's pretty much, in this kind of scenario, there's no reason not to. Uh, double primal bellow kills us, I think, no matter what we do. Single primal bellow is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 11 damage. We can afford to take one hit. He's just going to hit us, so he doesn't have the primal bellow. Or at least you're fairly confident that you can beat us in that time. And then we'll fiery temper you. Which untaps these two again. So we let them untap. Thermo alchemist twice. Again. Huh. Uh, land. Uh, land's actually not necessarily that bad because Dynavolt Tower can come down then, and we just need a, an instant or sorcery after the Twin Bolt because we'll get three from the Twin Bolt, five from the next instant on sorcery we play, which could just be the Kozilek's return, and that's an extra three damage, which is the burn spell we're looking for. So we'll play Dynavolt Tower. And it's stuck. Hello? We've desynced, apparently. Yeah, look, my time is gone. Replaced by AI. I don't think our opponent thinks they can win, so they're probably just dis disconnected there. Okay. Well, we don't need our Thermo Alchemists after this turn. So I'm going to double block both the creatures. I'm um, just thinking of whether or not I should... Ooh, Nissa. Nissa Vital Force is going to put an extra 5 damage on the board. Uh. Are we dead to a Primal Bellow again? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Plus 5, plus 5 makes that an 11. Oh, you've got a 7, 7. So we're going to block and block here to avoid 11 damage. And then we're just going to tap our Thermo Alchemist the same way. To get as much damage through as possible. And then next turn we win. Gets in with all of them. Okay. So block and block. Pause the game. Tap and tap. Twin bolt. Both at you. Get two energy. Takes us up to three. Thermal alchemists on tap. And we tap them again for an extra two. And we see if we die or not. No redirecting. We're going for the win. And honk. And poop. We didn't die. And our opponent doesn't have the mana to gain life. Because Pulsar Marasa, I believe, is the only one that can. So, Kozlek's return. Gains us two energy. Takes us up to five. Dynavolt Tower for three. Yes! Woo! Oh, that went closer than I hoped. Alright guys, so that's going to do it for today's episode. Remember, if you do want me to play a deck in the future, then be sure to give me suggestions if you don't have a deck list as well. I uh, take suggestions for future decks, and then I might, necessarily, might not necessarily have to do them on subscriber decks. Uh weeks so if you want me to play a certain deck that i haven't played before then be sure to suggest it down in the comment section below now i'll bear it in mind and maybe build a deck around it but if you do have a deck list then be sure to send me them and i will play them on future deck series also leave a like if you enjoyed the episode it helps me out a great deal lets me know you're enjoying the content and subscribe for more magic in the future as well as other stuff and if you're not sure what that is stay for the end card where you'll find the deck tech and other stuff and i will see you next time bye bye